Today, we dive into the hidden corners of folklore, where the tales of mischievous creatures take root, where the line between fact and fantasy blurs and secrets are revealed. There are beings that have captivated the human imagination with their small stature and elusive presence. Legends and myths have whispered their existence, but are they merely figments of our collective imagination? Or is there more to these magical beings than meets the eye? That is the gnome. Some stories render gnomes as the guardians of the natural world, protectors of hidden knowledge, and witnesses to the passage of time. Legends of their powers from granting good fortune to manipulating the very fabric of nature have enthralled storytellers for generations. From gardens to deep forest, from whispered giggles to mischievous pranks, understand taking a glimpse of their world is to step into the unknown, where reality twists and turns. It is a place where the boundaries of possibility are pushed to their limits, and the veil is close. So, for almost every creature that exists in mythology or folklore, there is always more than one type. And they go by different names depending on the region, culture, or country. Generally speaking, we know and can identify, for the most part, the difference between a gnome, a fairy, a goblin, a troll, a hobbit, an elf. We know that they are different, although sometimes the lines are blurred. For example, is a goblin just a different type of fairy creature? Or could a goblin be a different type of gnome? Between those two, what's a leprechaun? While we're on the subject, what's a smurf or a fraggle? Now, of course, some of these creatures are just adaptations for children's television shows, and then there are the ones that are rendered into horror movies. The Tommyknockers by Stephen King. In King's story, the Tommyknockers are depicted as extraterrestrial beings who cause strange occurrences and transformations in a small town. However, in origin, Tommyknockers are mythical creatures or supernatural entities associated with mining folklore, particularly in the areas like Cornwall, England and parts of the United States. According to the legends, they were believed to be mischievous spirits or small humanoid creatures that inhabited mines and tunnels. The name Tommyknocker is thought to have originated from the sound that miners would hear underground, which they attributed to these unseen entities. The knocking sounds were believed to be warnings or signals, indicating potential dangers or cave-ins. In mining folklore, Tommyknockers were seen as both helpful and mischievous beings. Miners would sometimes leave offerings of food or small gifts to appease the Tommyknockers and gain their favor. This seems to be the universal language of different entities of this type to make offerings in exchange for something. Humans behave this way. It's a trick or a treat. And these beings were believed to possess a knowledge of the underground and would knock to guide miners 
to valuable ore or to warn them of impending disasters. However, Tommy knockers were also known to play pranks on miners, such as moving tools, extinguishing lamps, or creating eerie noises. Some legends even attribute accidents or unexplained events in mines to the meddling of the Tommy knockers. So, one of the most common type of gnome is the forest gnome, which tends to keep its distance from humans, preferring the solitude of woodland realms. The garden gnome, on the other hand, finds its home in old gardens, where it delights in sharing old tales that reflect its wistful nature. Dune gnomes, slightly larger than their woodland counterparts, have a penchant for remarkably drab clothing. They choose conservative attire that blends with their desert surroundings. House gnomes, having the most knowledge of humans, often speak their language. From this family, gnome kings are chosen, entrusted with the responsibility of leading their kind. Farm gnomes resemble house gnomes, but exhibit a more conservative demeanor and fashion sense, reflecting their connection to traditional rural life. Siberian gnomes, having interbred more extensively than other types, associate freely with trolls and possess a significantly larger stature. However, these gnomes have a more malevolent nature. It is strongly advised to avoid provoking the Siberian gnome as they take great pleasure in seeking revenge. Believed to have originated in Scandinavia, the gnomes migrated to the lowlands approximately 1,500 years ago, standing at the average height of 15 centimeters or up to a foot in some stories. Gnomes appear taller when wearing their pointed red caps, Their pigeon-toed feet provide them with enhanced speed and agility in woodland and grassy environments. Male gnomes wear blue, brown, or green pants with a tool kit attached to their waist belts, while females have gray or khaki clothing with a blouse, skirt, knee socks, and high shoes or slippers. Now, unmarried females wear green caps, which are replaced by more subdued tones after marriage. Now gnomes are known as guardians of animals and exhibit a general fondness for wildlife. They display little preference for specific animal friends except for wild and domesticated cats. Gnomes are known for freeing animals trapped by humans and for providing medical assistance to farm animals when their owners can't afford a veterinarian. Their primary adversaries are trolls and other beings seeking to harm them or their homes. They tend to inhabit hilly meadows and rocky woodlands. Now, according to some stories, they live within three trees the house itself with a hidden entrance from another tree and a third tree used as a supply room stocked with grains, beans, potatoes and other provisions required during winter. Gnomes are known to be in some cases seven times stronger than humans capable of running at speeds up to 35 miles per hour and they have really sharp vision surpassing that of a hawk. These attributes aid them in various tasks, such as locating wounded or dying animals, for which they feel a deep responsibility for. Due to their affinity for animals, all forest creatures consider gnomes their friends, readily offering assistance when needed. Gnomes are widely regarded as the finest gem cutters and jewelers, displaying a passion for gems and jewelry. Aligned with the element of earth, gnomes maintain a vegetarian diet and possess a 
carefree outlook on life. Their main meal includes an assortment of nuts, mushrooms, peas, beans, small potatoes, applesauce, fruits, berries, vegetables, preserves for dessert. As for beverages, some gnomes enjoy mead dew, fermented honey, fermented raspberries with a high alcohol content, spiced gin. Gnomes abstain from consuming meat and often indulge in high protein plants. Now, all of that is the typical fairy tale gnome. If we go way back, we of course find the origins of this creature to be much darker in nature. Of course we would, right? The true origins of gnomes can be traced to ancient times. These spirits held significant roles in Renaissance magic and alchemy, particularly as earth elementals, alongside salamanders representing fire, undines representing water, and sylphs representing air. Gnomes were considered one of the four spirits of the four elements, representing earth. The term gnome finds its roots in Renaissance Latin, appearing in the works of 16th century Swiss alchemist Paracelsus, from the term from the Latin word genomus, which itself originated from the Greek phrase meaning earth dweller. It is possible that Paracelsus invented the term himself to describe these mystical beings. Now, Philippus Theophrastus Aurelius Bombastus von Hohenheim, commonly known as Paracelsus, was a Swiss physician, alchemist, and philosopher who lived during the 16th century. He is considered one of the most influential figures in the development of early modern medicine and the occult sciences. Boy, that's a long name. He was born in 1493 in Switzerland and received his early education in monastic schools. He later studied medicine at various universities in Europe, gaining knowledge not only from traditional medical texts but also from personal observations and experiences. Paracelsus rejected the prevailing medical theories of his time and advocated for a more holistic approach to healing, combining alchemical and mystical principles with medical practice. He is known for his contributions to the understanding of chemistry and pharmacology. He believed that all substances in nature, including minerals, plants, and metals, contained medicinal properties that could be harnessed for the treatment of diseases. His innovative ideas challenged the traditional concepts of medicine and laid the foundation for the development of pharmaceutical sciences. Now he wrote extensively on topics ranging from the nature of diseases and their treatments to astrology, magic, and the spiritual dimensions of existence. Gnomes were described as subterranean creatures, residing and eventually perishing underground. Ancient and dark, they were often depicted wearing monk robes. While they are portrayed as small and humpbacked, gnomes were also believed to have the ability to transform into giants, showing their capacity for immense power. Paracelsus characterized gnomes as being approximately two spans high, or about the length of an adult hand span. These beings were known for their reluctance to interact with humans, preferring to navigate through solid earth. They were deeply connected to the earth element, embodying its essence and guarding the secrets hidden beneath the surface. Throughout various ancient and medieval mythologies, the concept of chthonic spirits, including gnomes, can be found. These spirits were often associated with the guardianship of mines and precious underground treasures such as the Germanic Dwarves. They have a long and multifaceted history rooted in Renaissance magic and ancient mythologies. You know, the earth is a very big place 
and I suppose there could be a race of nearly extinct beings hidden in the shadows. Speaking of shadows, you can make connections with DMT machine elves and gnomes, which may explain the knowledge coming from Paracelsus about gnomes. Also, shadow people are connected because when you start to discuss evil gnomes, now we are getting into the topic of goblins, which in a manner of speaking can come in the form of a shadow being, the shadow gnome. <laughs> well, that's all for now. There is more to come. Please visit woodwardentertainment.com to become a level one member for exclusive content. Woodward TV is available to view on Rumble, and you can also follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day, and until next time, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.